Have you ever wondered what's behind this door? Today, we're going to show you and share our story. Keep watching, you won't want to miss it. Let's take it way back. How far back? All the way. Well, how about all the way back to high school? We got together in 1999. Yep, you played bass with the high rollers and not long after that, I got a job as a radio personality. And before long, I also joined the team at WRLV 97.3. In 2002, the year after we got married, we began working on a building. It was a recording studio that Brian called Max Audio. He took a brief break to work on the business, but then returned to radio in 2003. Now in 2007, she moved on to other ventures and I remained in radio. She would come back from time to time to host some shows or produce news and weather and things like that. But I stayed in the radio game for about 20 years. Brian also played bluegrass and gospel music with several groups over the years and still does so today. So between radio and me playing music and the recording studio, music's played a big part in our lives. During the spring of 2020, we finally decided to make use of the old recording studio that had evolved into personal storage. Now the building needed some repairs and since we were going to have to put some money into it anyway, we thought maybe there's a better use for it than just storage. For no apparent reason, an idea popped into my head, and I asked Brian, what do you think about starting a wood shop? He actually thought it was a good idea, so we bought some essential tools and a miter saw and a table saw. When we built our first project, the mobile workbench, I wondered, maybe we should start making YouTube videos about woodworking. And I asked her if we could do that with her can-do attitude. She said, sure, why not? And Wood Songs by Russell was born. So why wood songs? Like Brian said, music has played such a huge role in our lives. It was just the first thing that popped into my head, and we just ran with it. We've heard time and time again, if you want to start woodworking, start where you are and with what you have and grow from there. We certainly took that to heart. After making some repairs on the building, we retained the original layout. The front room of the building used to be a lounge area, we turned that into our woodworking space, and in the back part of the building, we converted the old control room into a personal storage area and the former studio room into the tool and wood storage area. Because of the small footprint, we had to move tools out into the workshop one or two at a time and were operating in very tight quarters. Filming became quite a challenge. We knew something needed to change. So we decided to tear down the wall between the studio and the control room. We knew it wasn't load-bearing because when we built the building, we used solid trusses that went all the way across the span from one side to the other. The new, larger space would serve as our workshop with stations for each tool. We would move wood storage and personal storage to the front part of the building. The new space would offer better lighting control for filming YouTube videos and greater efficiency for building projects since we weren't having to move tools one at a time. So the first thing we needed to do was tear down the wall. You can see here there was already an opening because there was a window between the two rooms, the control room and the studio room. I had to be extra careful while removing the glass. I only broke one of the four panes and didn't even get cut. Brian used a reciprocating saw to cut the top and bottom of each stud from the wall. Then he made vertical cuts to remove portions of the wall to make it a little easier. Now we'd install homemade patch bays in the floor to connect microphones, headphones, and such between one room to the other. They would no longer be needed, so I removed them by taking off the top, clipping all the cables, then sawing the nails that held the enclosure to the floor. Then I used studs from the old wall to make nailers. We don't have footage of that because I did it from under the floor and it would have been hard to film it under there. Then I cut some pieces of plywood to patch the holes in the floor.
Next, Brian removed the old wall sill plate from the floor. He looks like a man of steel here, but he really sawed most of those nails loose prior to filming. case in the new opening, we cut pieces of project paneling on the table saw. Now that was a job because this stuff is real thin and flimsy and we don't have an infeed table right now to feed it into the table saw. But after we got them all cut, we put them in place with 18 gauge brad nails. We no longer needed sound control, so we removed these wedge panels from the wall. Brian had originally attached them with liquid nail. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. I actually wound up having to use 80 grit on the random orbital sander and remove that liquid nail and that was a task. One of our former ventures was owning a rental property and later flipping that house when the market got hot. We had some leftover paint in a color called bungalow beige and we put it to excellent use. Once we had the space renovated, all we had left to do was decide the best spot for each one of the tools in the workbench. So, now let's take a tour of the new workshop. Are you ready to see what's behind this door? This is uh, one of the shorter walls in the room and we have our router table here and then right here in this corner we have our homemade dust separator which we can move wherever we need to move it. This is actually symbolic because as we grow and we start to do more production we are going to invest in an actual dust collection system. I'm very excited about that. Now this wall over here has one of the longer spans in the room. We decided to put the miter saw here. You got a heater out here and one over there. We got a pretty good span between here. So eventually I'm going to build a miter station right in here. Keep a lookout for a video on that. I'm sure I'll make one as I build it. All right, this corner back here, you'll notice there's a window on the wall. That used to actually be a sound booth. And right now it's tool storage. It will probably continue to be a storage closet. We're not taking a tour of that today. It's quite a mess but we will be doing some videos on shop organization. So if you wanna check those out, 
be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss an episode. Right underneath there, we're gonna do some kind of built-in to store some more tools. There's a lot of things that we want that we don't have yet. And now that we're in this new space, we actually have room to house them. So we're really excited about that. And back in this corner is going to be some more tool storage. You can see we've got our pancake and our pointer. And so we'll build out in this area to just have some general tool storage. So um, it's just really amazing what a difference being in this space has made. And now we finally get around to where the old workbench goes. This is pretty much right in the center of the room and it also serves as outfeed for the table saw. There's still quite a few things that we want to do to this space that we haven't done just yet. We talked about starting where you are. We think this is a really great start for our new space. In the future, we do have indoor-outdoor carpet in here. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to keep clean with a broom and a vacuum, but we would really like something more solid, like a vinyl tile, some rubber mats or something like that. Um, so we'll probably be doing a video on that. Just stay tuned. Also, our YouTube channel has been growing steadily and we want to thank you if you've already subscribed. If not and you're enjoying our channel, feel free to like this video, subscribe, and like I said earlier, ring the bell. We want to bring you the best content possible and we think renovating this space will help us achieve that goal. Well, we hope you've enjoyed getting to know us a little bit better and taking this tour of our new workspace. Don't forget to visit us on Facebook at Woodsongs by Russell and also our website, www.woodsongsbyrussell.com. If you'd like to support our channel, try buying some merchandise. We have shirts, a mug, um, some other things out on Bonfire. We'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks again for joining us today and happy, happy woodworking! woodworking.